very good evening and welcome to the news live on Channel I. Hello, very good evening. I'm Hikmi Samarasekhar. I'm Javed Bonzo. We begin with the headlines. The president emphasized that although some people attempt to betray the motherland to the international community, the forward march of the country cannot be reversed by such actions. The government and the opposition have condemned the speech made by parliamentarian Sridharan in parliament to project Prabhakaran as a hero. Australia has extended the ban on LTTE. More than another thousand new doctors for hospital service. A referendum is to be held next year for freeing Scotland from Britain. We take a look at those stories in detail now. President Mahindra Rajapaksha said that certain people have made it a habit to make allegations about Sri Lanka in connection with the international community. He said, however, that no one can halt Sri Lanka's forward march. The president emphasized that the government will never hesitate to fulfill its duties and responsibilities for the welfare of the people. The president made these comments while participating in the function held yesterday to declare open the new Kaduela bus terminal complex. 120 million rupees have been spent for the construction of this three-storied bus terminal complex. The Kaduela municipality spent 80 million rupees on this project while the balance was provided by the Western Provincial Council. The bus terminal complex, which provides facilities for about 10,000 passengers a day and about 200 buses, operate from this bus stand on eight passenger routes daily. There are 28 stalls at this bus stand complex as well. This is the only bus stand in the country which has electric ventilation facilities. It also has digital name boards. Plans have been made to start operation of, of bus services from this bus stand complex to the Katunaika and Southern Expressways as well. The bus terminal complex was declared open by the Minister of Economic Development, Basa Rajapaksha. It was then inspected by President Mahindra Rajapaksha. The President, speaking at the function, says that it is the duty and responsibility of each and everyone to contribute to the building of the nation being introduced by the government. The President said that the people's support is vital for the development of the country. It is essential to receive the support of the people to protect children and to protect the country from the drug menace. He said that this cannot be done by the government alone. The support of the people is essential for building society. He said that we now have a country to develop and we now have a nation to carry forward. The president said that the government is not prepared to shatter the trust which is given to the government by the people and it is because of that that the government is carrying out the development program of this country. Minister Susil Premajan, Dinesh Gunavardhana, H.M. Fauzi, Mayor of Kadwara, G.H. Puddhadasa and several others attended the function. Members of the government and the opposition expressed their stern condemnation for the speech made by the Tamil National Alliance parliamentarian S. Sridharan projecting Velu Pillai Prabhakaran as a great hero. The deputy chairman of the committee, Chandra Kumara Murgesu, ordered that the complete speech made by MP Sridharan should be expunged from the hands of report and should be prevented from being issued to the media. The Ministry of Defence, meanwhile, says that the government has power to take legal action against any attempts being made to commemorate Tiger terrorists. The Ministry said that no room could be given for the revival of terrorism. The Director General of the Media Centre for National Security, Lakshman Hunugala, said that all legal steps would be taken against attempts being made to revive terrorism. Mr. Hulugala appealed to media institutions to refrain from providing publicity to any matter that could be a threat Yaman to national security. The Director General of the Media Centre for National Security, Lakshman Hulugala, said that it is unlawful uh, the attempts being made by certain persons and certain organizations to commemorate the Tiger terrorists who were defeated four years ago is unlawful. Statements made by such persons or organizations are a threat to national security. Therefore, the government is going to be very vigilant about those who are indulging in this type of activity and the government also has the possibility of taking legal action against them. If certain people are attempting to drag the country once again into terrorism, it is justifiable to take legal action against them, he said. 
Those who hold independent opinion question whether it is morally correct for the United National Party, which betrayed the motherland, for the foreign media to go to the courts against the local private media. They point out that those who claim with political objectives that there is no media freedom within the country clearly displays the true objectives of the, of, of the opposition. The United National Party parliamentarian Mangala Samaravira has filed a petition before the Magistrate Court of Matra yesterday requesting for an injunction against media coverage by a private media institution under Clause 81 of the Penal Code. The reason for the request of the court order is for providing publicity to a footwalk organized by a group of the United National Party members. The government has provided total freedom for media institutions to operate their media coverage independently. Despite this, the opposition, which vociferously claim in the international arena that there is no media freedom in the country. Those who hold independent opinion point out that if these people come to power, no one will be able to prevent situations like what happened to media personnel like Richard de Souza happening in the country once again. They point out that people can imagine what will happen to media freedom in this country if these people who attempt to control media by being in the opposition come to power. Deputy Minister of Finance Dr. Sarath Amnugam has said that the budget is one that encourages local entrepreneurs. It is the objective of the government to make the country self-sufficient in local products. The minister made these comments by speaking at a function held in Colombo today. The function was organized in connection with the release of the 2013 budget report relating or rather the 2013 report relating to Asia Pacific trade investment issued by the UN Economic and Social Commission. The report contains details of economic development and progress in the Asia Pacific region. The function was organized by the Asia Pacific Research and Training Network for Trading Activities and the Sri Lanka Policy Education Institution. We have not taxed any of the domestic agricultural or industrial or commercial goods. These are taxes at the point of customs, whatever can be produced locally in the field of agriculture, field of small industries and all that, government will give through cess and through taxes various incentives so that we can come back. It has a tremendous impact not only in making us self-sufficient and giving us food security. Imagine the savings we are going to make when you look at our food bill. Secretary to the Ministry of Finance, Dr. P. Bichasundra, meanwhile, expressed his opinion in an interview with National Rupa Vahini about the levying of taxes for import of goods under the budget. Secretary to the Ministry of Finance, Dr. P. Bichasundra, said that the taxes have been imposed on items that are imported from foreign countries despite the same item being produced locally. However, there are no taxes for items which are exclusively imported. There is no tax, for example, on dry fish and milk products produced locally. The milk farmer will get 50 rupees per litre of milk because of this tax. Another 1,043 students who have successfully completed the medical degree has been provided internship appointments. A function in this connection was held at the BMICH today under the patronage of Minister of Health Maitri Parak Sirisena. Along with this batch, the number of persons entered to the medical profession this year amount to 1,458. Students from the medical faculties of Colombo, Jawardhanapura, Ragama, Ruhuna, Peradeniya, Jaffna, Batikalo and Rajarata and some others who have obtained foreign medical degrees received appointments today. Those who receive internship appointments have been posted to Karvanalla and Kuliapitiya hospitals. A part of those who received appointments today will be posted to LPTA based hospital. The Ministry of Health said that 90% of those who receive appointments today can efficiently handle Tamil speaking patients. The Ministry of Health and the Ministry of National Languages and Social Integrity have provided them Tamil language training for a period of six months. Speaking at the function, Minister Maitri Pal Sirsen said that Sri Lanka's health services has been appreciated by many countries. He said that the new appointees have the responsibility of safeguarding this situation. 
Minister Maitri Palasirisena said that the doctors in this country, amounting to about 16,000, have earned a respectable name. At present, patients in Western countries, Sri Lankans in Western countries, and those who earn a better income come to Sri Lanka when they fall ill and require to get an, op an operation done. The reason for this is that the standard of doctors in this country and the health services are on a higher standard. Therefore, those who are joining the medical profession today as youngsters should dedicate themselves to safeguarding the honour and international recognition existing for Sri Lanka's health services for at least another 25 years. The secretary, the secretary to the Ministry of Health, Dr. Nihal Jatilaka, and Director General of Health Services, Dr. Partha Mahipala, also attended the function. An action plan for the Commonwealth of the future has been presented to President Mahindra Rajapaksha. The action plan had been formulated by scholars in the higher education sector. It was presented to President Mahindra Rajapaksha at a function held in Colombo today. The President will hold the Chair of the Commonwealth for a period of two years. Recommendations have been presented in the Commonwealth of the Future, a visionary and bold leadership from Sri Lanka action plan for the development of the 53 Commonwealth member nations. The recommendations have been introduced under the headings of Education, Innovation, Culture, Health, Trade, Business and Economic Development, Human Security, Democracy, Good Governance and the Rule of Law. The program has been formulated after wide discussions by the Vice Chancellors, Professors, Doctors, Administrative Officers and Scholars in the University sector. They have also presented to the President a memento celebrating his appointment as the Chair of the Commonwealth for the next two years. Ministers S.P. Desanayaka, Professor Geo Piris, Chairperson of the University Grants Commission, Dr. Ms. Shanikab Hiruburekama, and the Secretary to the Ministry of Higher Education, Dr. Sunil Jayanta Navaratna, also attended the function. The well-known British businesswoman, Mrs. Arlene Kidd, said that Sri Lanka has achieved a rapid development during the past war period the post-war period rather. She predicted that Sri Lanka will be more developed than Singapore in the future. Mrs. Arlene Kidd made these comments in a special interview with the Rupawahini. Sri Lanka is an up-and-coming country economically um, and uh, personally as a person who has traveled quite extensively throughout the world uh, in business and I find Sri Lanka one of the main, uh, one of the nicest countries to work in. I think business-wise, it, it has a lot of opportunities here, and it was important to Sri Lanka to to show the the, the world basically what uh, what what lies here. You know, to me, it's always been a little jewel in the in, in the ocean, um, and has so much um, going for it, and and, and has so much potential. Um, that I, I'm, I'm hoping that this, this whole thing uh, that has happened from my country will not overshadow the, the, all the good things that have, been, that have been done in Sri Lanka. And uh, Sri Lanka becomes a central point when it comes to business because you people are traveling in from the uh, south and the north. Like it yes. becomes a central point it for comes Sri Lanka. Become a, it, has, it is very much a central point. Um, from Sri Lanka you can go east or west very easily and you can be within, you know, be within countries whether it's, it's Thailand, whether it's Vietnam, Certainly for my business, um, these are very important countries. And as far as China and uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong, the, the, the links logistically, whether it's by, you know, by air, is very, very easy. Meanwhile, Australia has decided to continue to consider the LTTE organization as a terrorist organization. The Australian government announced the list of terrorist organizations yesterday. The Australian government has also announced a legal framework for taking action against members of terrorist organizations and those who support such organizations. The ban will be in operation for a further three years for 87 terrorist organizations, including the LTTE. The Australian Foreign Minister, Mrs. Julie Bishops, has said that it is the intention of Australia to act against terrorism in all forms. She has pointed out that Australia is obliged to act against terrorists under the UN conventions it is party to. Monrovilla Kapitipola, the hero who dedicated his life for liberating the motherland from the British imperialists, has been commemorated. Today is the 196th commemoration of Vira Kapitipola. 
The British rulers sent Capitabula to control the 1818 Uwa freedom struggle and Capitabula left the British contingent and joined the freedom fighters. The British rulers, after suppressing the people's struggle, took Capitabula de Sava and several others into custody. They imposed death penalties under treason charges. The Capitabula Nilame was executed by the British rulers on the 26th November 1818 at the Bogambro prison. The 196th commemoration of Capitipola was held today near the Capitipola statue in the Capitipola town in Valimada. The chief minister of the Uwa province, Shashindra Rajapaksa, was the chief guest at this function. Members of the Mahasangha and Uwa provincial council members attended the function. <laughs> The national heroes who were deported to Mauritius in 1818 and who were deported to Malacca in 1848 have been commemorated. The function in this connection was held at the auditorium of the National Museum today. The British rulers deported 25 freedom strugglers to Mauritius and 14 of them were imposed with life imprisonment. Some of them died in Mauritius. Several others returned to the country. The family members hailing from the families of national heroes were appreciated today. Minister T. B. A. Kanaika was the chief guest at the function. A census is to be carried out about the loss of life and damage to properties under the atmosphere of confrontation that existed since 1982. The census will look into those who were injured, those disabled, and missing persons. The Director General of Census and Statistics Department, DCA Gunavardhana, said that the census will start on the 28th of this month. The census will take into account incidents that took place between 1982, the start of the conflict, and May 2009, when it ended. 16,000 officials within the 14,022 Gram and Iradari divisions will be deployed for the census. The Director General of Census and Statistics Department said that the census has been entrusted to his department under the recommendations of the LLRC Commission report. As you all aware, this is a very sensitive uh, census, so I request all uh, all the people, all the people who have the uh, household, uh, to give, provide the correct information and assist other enumerators to uh, get the uh, true information for this uh, census. Several functions and pinkham ceremonies were held today in connection with the 77th birth anniversary of the former minister, the late Lalit Atulat Mudali. The late Mr. Lalit Atulad Mudali was born on 16, uh, 26 November 1936 and received his preliminary education at St. John's College in Panadura and Royal College Colombo. He studied law at the Oxford University in Britain and he was also the president of the Oxford Union. He was a barrister and received a scholarship for reading law at the Harvard University. He was a lecturer in law in several local and foreign universities and was also president's counsel. He entered Parliament from 1977, general election, and held ministerial portfolios of national security, trade and shipping, education and higher education. He passed away on 23rd April 1993, becoming the victim of a shooting by an unidentified gunman. In connection with the commemoration of his birthday, floral tributes were offered to his statue near the Royal College Colombo. Another function of offering floral tributes was held near his statue at the Maliban Junction. An almsgiving was held at the Paramadam Machetia Piraven Viharia in Ratmalana. At this function, dry food rations were also distributed to low-income families. The Deputy Mayor of Devala Mount Lavinia Municipal Council, Kesarala Gunsekara, and several others attended the function. Scottish First Minister Alex Salmon has launched the SNP's independence blueprint, calling it a mission statement for Scotland's future. Launching the paper, the First Minister said that this is the most comprehensive blueprint for an independent country ever published, not just for Scotland, but for any prospective independent nation. 
As well as making the case for independence, the white paper also set out a series of policy pledges which the SNP said it would pursue if elected as the government of an independent Scotland. The Scottish government said the Scotland's finances were healthier than those of the UK, providing a strong foundation to put the focus of the referendum campaign on Scotland's future. Mr. Simon said that the list of policies would help address what he described as the damage caused by vast social disparities which has which have been seen in the UK become one of the most unequal societies in the developed world. Well, a look in a, a look at the weather and the Med Department says that a cyclone situation has developed in the Bay of Bengal area and it is moving towards India. The department says that there will be no direct impact to Sri Lanka from this cyclonic situation. However, the department says that there will be intermittent showers in the north and eastern provinces tomorrow and that there could be thunder showers in the evenings or in the nights in other parts of the country and the rains could be accompanied by strong winds. The department also requests people to be cautious about lightning. Well, that's all the news we have for you tonight. Do join us tomorrow at the same time for more. Until then, it's a very good night.